Hello all, in today's short tutorial, I will show you how to add array items on your character using a Blueprint interface. Let's jump in. In your content drawer, first let's create two items. I will right click, new Blueprint class of type actor. We will call this BP underscore add item object. I will right click again going to blueprint and creating a blueprint interface. I will call this BPI underscore add item to player. Let's open up. So in our blueprint interface, we will add a function and we will recall that a blueprint, a blueprint interface allows us to basically add a, a bunch of functions, which we can call on any object that this interface is implemented on. So we'll jump into that in a little bit, but first I'll create a function called add item name to player and create an input over here. I'll hit the plus sign that says item name. And we'll make this variable a name. I'll compile and I'll save. Now I'll go to my blueprint and add some additional functionality. I'll double click. And I will add two components. I will add a text render object. And where it says horizontal alignment on the right side of our screen, I'll change this to center. I will change the vertical alignment to center. And I will change the Z value of our objects transform to 150. Now I will add a box collision in my component panel by searching box collision. I will change the box extent on the details panel in the right side to 100, 100, 100. I will change the Z location to 50. In the details panel, I will search collision and I will make sure that it says generate overlap events is true, which is set by default. And under the collision presets, I will change this to overlap only pawn. I'll compile and now I will go to my event graph and what we want to happen is we want when we overlap our box it's going to communicate with our player it's going to tell us what item it has and then add that to the player's array so I will right click where it says box and I will say add event and go to add component begin uh, on component begin overlap now, what's going to happen is we're going to first test if our player has this interface. So to make this a little easier, easier to understand, first we'll go to our third person character. So if we search third person character in our content browser, <clears throat> we can open this up and we can add our interface. So to add an interface, we go to our class settings, which is in the top panel here. And then on the right side, it will say implemented interfaces. I can add the BPI we just created, which we've called BPI underscore add item to player. And then we see immediately that this function has added, uh, has popped up on our panel over here. So I can right click this and I can say implement event. And then on our character, when this event is called from another blueprint, we can add functionality here. So if we go back to our blueprint, which is our object with the text name and a collision box, when we overlap, we'll take the actor here and we'll say does implement interface. And our interface is going to be our BPI add item to player. So I'm going to browse to that. And I'm going to use my little gray arrow here just to drop that into place. I can also search it, but I like to use the arrow. Uh, I will add a branch and I will drag this in here. So if it does implement that interface, which in this situation, our character does now implement this interface, and we can see in our class settings that it is under implemented interface. So if it does implement that interface, then we will call the function that we added in our interface. So the function is called add item to player. 
So I'll drag off true and say add item name to player. And we need an, we'll pass through our other actor, which is our character that we want to call it on. And we need, we need a name to pass through. So I'm going to drag off here, promote this to a variable, and I'll call this item name. And we're going to make this visible. So we'll hit this little eyeball right here. It's grayed out until you click it. Now you can see that it's visible. Compile. And now we're going to go to our construction script. And we will say, we're going to grab our text render object. I'll pull off of it and say set text. I'll drag this execution pin in here. And then I'm going to drag our item name out, say get item name, and then I will drag this into value. It will convert it from a name to a, a text to a name so that we can pass it through. We'll set an item name value in our details panel. So we'll select on the left here, and then we have a default value. So right now it's none, but I will call it uh, default item name. And when we compile, we'll see that in our viewport, it will say the name of our item. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to pull off here and say destroy actor so that after we collect this object, it will be removed and it will destroy itself. So now let's go to our third person character. So we've already added this event, which is add uh, item name to player. So when we overlap this object, right here, the one with the collision box. When we overlap this object, it's going to pass through the name right here. So here we're calling this function on our player, which will basically spit the item name out right here. And now we want to add this to an array. So I've created an array called pickup names, but what we can also do is drag off here and say promote to variable. We'll call this item names. And you'll notice here that it has this, um, you know, down here and up here in the top right. We'll see that it's a single object. And so we can see that it has this icon, which is a little sort of line. If we click this and drop it down, we can change any variable type uh, from a single, an array, and a map. And I don't personally use sets that often, so I would focus on these three. So I'm going to change this to an array. It's going to give me a warning. And it's going to be confused because a single coming out of here, it's not the same here. So I'm going to get rid of this because I'm going to set this in a different fashion. So I can pull off of here and say, get. And there's different ways to add an item to an array. So if I pull off array, I can say add. If I pull off an array, I can say add unique. And I can pull off an array and say set array elem or element. These are the three most common ways that I like to set arrays. And there's situations for each that you'd want to use. If you add an array, so let's say I run over an object that says bananas twice. And I say add, there will be two copies of the object bananas. If I say add unique, there will only be one copy of the word bananas because it will recognize that bananas already exists and it won't add that second uh, object. And set array elem allows me to basically specify an index that I want to add. So let's say um, this can be very often used with loops uh, for each loops because I have it's easy to put in an indice here. And I can also scale it um, to fit. So I'm going to use add unique in this situation. So I'll pull this into here. I'm going to drag this in here. And then I'm going to pull off and say for each loop. And I'm going to pull off here. And I'm going to say, actually off the loop body, I'll say print string. I'm going to pull off here and say append. And I will say, I have a 
space, and then we'll drag this into here. So as I collect items, what it's going to do is add them to this array. It's going to add that, um, or it's, and then we're going to print to our screen the name of the objects we have in our sort of fake inventory. So let's go to our map. I will drag a few of my objects out into the environment. And I'm going to drag these up to ground level like that. And I'll alt and left click to drag and create new versions of these. And I'll create six. So I'm going to click my first one. And over here it says item name, which is possible because we did the little eyeball thing right here, which makes it visible to our, uh, when we're an editor. So the first one, let's call this sword. Second one, we'll call it bow and arrow. Third one, we'll call it health potion. We'll call this horse. We'll call this armor. And the last one I'll call this brick. So these are a bunch of items I could pick up. And I will go into my environment. I'm going to save. I'm going to right click, say play from here. So I have a sword. I have a bow and arrow and a sword. I have a horse. I have a bow and arrow and a sword. So now it's going through all of the objects I have in my inventory and printing all of them. So if we go to my character and I hover over where it says item names, I can see all of the objects that are in my array. So to do that, make sure you have your character selected or whatever object you're trying to debug. And you can see in our blueprint debugger, the active items or values for this array. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys learned something new. Please stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 Blueprint tutorials. Thanks all.